Aloha y'all and welcome back to the channel and of course I am the legendary Savak but you probably already knew that hopefully you did if not welcome it's so nice to see you and make your acquaintance or so nice for you to see me whatever today is an extra special episode because we're doing not one but two victories in one week how about that we'll go ahead and breeze through the first one real quick uh, I can save you all the, all the juicy bits and just cut to the chase and say that <laughs> I was right. I was right. Uh, go ahead. I know. Leave it in the comments. Say it. I knew it. I knew you were right, Savak. You can, you can admit it. It's okay. I, uh, I know. I know. And Miami, uh, the Dolphins organization, I'll, I'll be accepting that job you know, as soon as it opens up. Right here. I'm your man. Told you. Score some fucking points and we'll get that victory, baby. Thankfully, Tarod came in cold, and so he was, uh, you know, I think he was a little bit out of practice for a while, having just come off of IR. He was on IR, right? Pretty sure. They were starting Davis Mills for a few weeks. So, thankfully, he wasn't able to roll all over us. <laughs> no, nobody was taking him seriously. Not that we were all that concerned about the Texans anyways, but I told you, and I knew it, man. And I, I, was, I had a feeling that maybe that game could spark uh, a, a triumphant comeback for this team. We still have a long season to go, ladies and gentlemen, so let's hang in there. But uh, we ended up beating the Texans, 17-9. to Yeah, and that was on Sunday. And then, of course, we had the short week, and we would travel on, and that was with Jacoby Brissett, by the way. Tua didn't even play in that game because this man done fractured his finger. What the hell? Of course, you know, leading to many people to be concerned. I was among the people that expressed concern, and for good reason. You know, this is the reason that I was not all that interested in Tua uh, before he got drafted. Because, let's face it, guys. You know, whatever a player does in college, whatever follows them through college, generally follows them into the pros, too, and does not tend to go away. You know, if you're a turnover machine, a la Jameis Winston, you come in, you're going to keep turning the ball over. You know, Jameis Winston, Sam Darnold, guys like that. If you're injury prone, Sam Bradford, you're probably going to continue to get injured in the pros as well. And I mean, let's face it, the hits don't get any lighter going from college to the pros. So that was always something to be concerned about. I figured Miami had done their due diligence and they felt comfortable enough to go ahead and spend a draft pick on this potentially fragile quarterback despite the fact that they have not been able to put a cohesive offensive line in front of this man to protect him or in front of any quarterback for that matter except for you know random miscellaneous seasons like uh, 2016 when they managed to keep Ryan Tannehill upright for most of the season and we only made fucking playoffs but you know what does anybody know what do, what do we know we're just fans you know we're, we only watch the games every day but whatever whatever doesn't matter every Sunday you got me. Either way, they managed to eke out that win over Houston, which was great. And we carried that momentum into Thursday night against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I'm not going to lie. Most of us, I think, were on the, on the side of believing that, you know what, we're probably going to get our asses kicked. And in my opinion, if we had avoided a blowout, it would have been considered a moral victory for most of us. Let's be realistic here. Uh, you've got one of the highest scoring offenses in the league right now, rolling in a p potential MVP candidate in Lamar Jackson, which would be his second MVP award. So, you know, by the way, I was right about him too. You can check that video. It's probably it's my most popular video on my uh, channel. I did it his uh, the off season before his second year. I made that video and it was after they drafted Marquise Brown and Miles Boykin. Um, and I just, I had a sense and I could see it. I'm like, he keeps getting better, you know? I and. I had said it before the game, of course, I was a little pessimistic because, again, let's be realistic. We've been watching them all year long. They've been making these incredible comebacks. How, what, how many have they won? They played in five games in, in which they were um, trailing in the second half by two scores, and they've won four of them. I mean, it, it, the odds didn't look to be in our favor, man. You know, uh, Lamar Jackson on his own is outscoring most entire offenses, so... It was uh, completely understandable for us to be a little bit um, bearish on the Dolphins coming into Thursday night. But Miami's defense showed up the same way we have been seeing them show up in the last couple of weeks. And which is exactly why I said last week, if we can just start putting points on the board, this defense will carry us. Put points on the board. Any points. 
But like I said, against Houston, we scored 17. And our defense held them to nine. And in this case, we end up barnstorming them. We put up 22 points, which that's that's around the magic number. This is what I've been saying uh, last time I appeared on the Lunch Bunch with the guys from the fish tank, Travis Wingfield. We, uh, we had discussed that, and they asked what it would take to start winning some games. And I said the magic number was three touchdowns. We can start getting around three touchdowns in a game. Our defense can keep us in it. Three touchdowns. And look at that. 22 points. We held the Ravens to 10. Lamar looked as bad as he's ever looked in the pros. Our defense was all the hell over him, which is interesting game planning, too. I noticed a lot of people calling that out on Twitter, everybody uh, identifying that Brian Flores was, in fact, calling the defensive plays. Look at that man go. This only adds fuel to what I was saying. We need to let him handle his defense, and he needs to get one, let me say it again, one competent offensive coordinator to act as his head coach of the offense. Put a person in place, let them handle the offense, let them do their thing so you can do your thing and it'll work, okay? Look, if you don't believe me, look at Arizona. Arizona's got it together, okay? Cliff Kingsbury was not a successful college head coach, but he, la he ran one of the more prolific offenses in college football. He comes over and what does he do? He assembles an excellent staff, but namely, there was one name that stuck out and it's a name that, that should be familiar to you Dolphin fans, Vance Joseph, formerly our defensive coordinator from, <laughs> as we mentioned, the 2016 campaign. And it worked. And that defense works well if an offense is scoring points. And that's what how their team is constructed. That's what they've done. And it also helped that Vance Joseph had some head coaching experience, having just recently been kicked to the curb by the Denver Broncos for doing a, a shit job. But it, it was hardly his fault. You know, I mean, who was his quarterback during that time? What do you have? Uh, Flacco was there, right? It was, I think it was Flacco, and then he, he got to mess with Drew Locke for a minute, and it, it, neither of them worked out. That's why Flacco is back with the Jets, and Drew Locke lost the job to Teddy Bridgewater. But that's neither here nor there. Cliff Kingsbury hired somebody who would have the defense under control, so he could do the offense. He could maintain the offense, do his thing, implement his game plan, his scheme, and get this offense moving in the right direction and he left the defense to Vance Joseph. And guess what? It might have looked choppy as hell in the first season and the first couple of seasons, but it's coming together now. And now suddenly they're among the better teams in the NFC. They're still considered among the better teams in the NFC and they've got a rash of injuries. Kyler Murray's day to day. He, he's probably gonna be a game time decision. <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins, probably gonna be a game time decision. I think Rondale Moore suffered a concussion. Like they are busted up on the offensive side of the ball and they're still considered one of the stronger teams in the NFC. So right there, that's the blueprint. And we need to be able to do the same thing. Brian Flores needs to find his offensive Vance Joseph. You know what I mean? And now, of course, I was talking about a guy and I'm gonna continue talking about him because I think that he could work. His name is Jeff Levy. You know, I mentioned this to my dad. My dad's also a Miami Dolphins fan. He doesn't get it. He's not, he's not listening to me. And it's okay, because, you know, he, he's, he's kind of an old head, and that's okay. I respect that. I respect his opinion because of that. He's been watching the Dolphins since, I mean, shit, 20 years, 20 something odd years before I was even born. I can't knock him for that. But he said, you know, just because it worked in college, son, doesn't mean it'll work in the pros. And I agree with him. I do, except that the pro game has been shifting ever so slightly towards the college game to account for the players coming in, to make the transition easier, to make these players come in and become superstars quicker. And you know, there's pros and cons to it, but the main thing that comes out of it means that these schemes are going to be similar anyways. You know, the things that they're, they're gonna be doing, things that they're gonna be running will be similar. A lot of these younger head coaches, that's, that's been the wave, right? You got a handful of these older guys that are still going, but they're, they're, you're starting to see the transition into the younger guys. It started with Sean McVay, you know, and now it's been extended with, you've got, um, oh, what's that man? Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan, uh, there was another one, Zach Taylor. There's a couple of, you know, a few of these guys, and there's only going to be more as we continue. So I think that it would, would be in our best interest to look in that direction. Jeff Levy would be a great, and I mean truly an excellent choice. You know, and it's not just about the schemes that he runs because he doesn't necessarily run anything that's 
that's uh, particularly college-y, you know what I mean? Scrapping the X's and O's, it's all in the little things. That's what I'm looking at. There are little tiny things that, that he teaches his players to do that our offense doesn't do. And I've seen other offenses in the pros do stuff like this. You know, the slight misdirection, the sleight of hand, things. Oh, look what I'm doing over here. And bam, the ball is going over there. That sort of thing, you know. What I, one thing I really grew to admire about Jeff Lebby's offense and it was when he was with UCF and they, were, they had Mackenzie Milton. And Mackenzie was great at, at playing this style of game. And almost every single play was a play action or a handoff and it always looked the same. So he would fake the, he would fake the play action or even better, yeah, that was it. He faked the play action. He would actually hand the ball to the running back, turn and throw as if he was throwing a screen real quick. Defense is, what? And then all of a sudden, bam, running back rips off a huge chunk of yardage just off that alone. And they were they were always working with undersized running backs too. These guys weren't first rounders. This wasn't your, your you know, your um, uh, Derrick Henry's and Ezekiel Elliott's or nothing. These are guys you've never heard of. A couple of which are in the league, and but they're buried on depth charts. I think, um, I can't remember the kid's name. It might be Otis Anderson, uh, but UCF had had about two or three of them. They were really, really fast guys. Not particularly big. They weren't going to go that. They weren't going to go high in the draft, and I don't believe they did. Uh, but you could get production out of them if you know how to use them. And and Jeff Levy knew how to use them. And that's what I when I look at Miami's roster, I look at what we've got offensively. I see a lot of pieces that in the right hands, in the right mind, we could get a lot of great results out of. And I think Jeff Levy is the mind to bring those results out. Now let's look back at this Thursday night game. So it was kind of rough early on, man. Uh, there was a lot of punting going on, and one of the announcers even said it, and he was spot on when he said it, was that there were more points, or excuse me, there were more punts than points. Boy, were there. I mean, they were punting back and forth. It was the punting, uh, punting, the punt contest of the century. Punt place. There's a pun in there somewhere. There's a pun in pun. Oh, that's, that's stupid. I'm not gonna cut it out though, because I had fun. And it started with Justin Tucker, I think, drew first blood, putting the first points on the board. And then he missed one, a rare Justin Tucker miss, so that was kind of neat. And uh, I was already complaining, because if you guys haven't been aware, follow me on Twitter, at SeriouslySavak, because I tend to live tweet throughout the game. Uh, I say some, you know, uh, relatable things, some funny things, some not so funny things, uh, but I, t I respond to basically everybody because, you know, why not? Uh, you know, it's a social media platform I'm trying to be social. I'm having fun with it. Uh, so by all means, follow me and, uh, you know, at me during the game, man. I love it. I love it. Um, but uh, I was I was complaining because I was like, please, for the love of God, at least get King Sanders within range so that he can knock some field goals through and we could have you know, a clash of the kickers here. Uh, but unfortunately, we what we learned, the number one thing I think we learned from this game was that uh, even Tua with a fractured finger is still better than Jacoby Brissett. No, no offense to Brissett. I love Jacoby. I'm glad he took the opportunity to come down to Miami and become our backup quarterback. It's really cool, man. You know, especially after coming off of you, he just started for, you know, a season and then backed up uh, Philip Rivers for a season and for him to come down and you know take that backup job was you know really cool of him but um, damn D damn I have never seen ugh, I can't I can't freaking say it you know I can't say it I can't say what I want to say about Jacoby Brissett because I'll get canceled for it but uh, damn he was he's really slow I've never noticed how slow that dude runs and I get it you know he's a pocket passer that's what he does right he stands back there he's statuesque he scans he surveys incorrectly and makes the wrong read and then throws an interception or vastly overthrows his receivers. I know somebody was like, well, Brissett can't throw downfield. I'm like, that's not necessarily true. He throws a beautiful deep ball. It just doesn't always land where his receivers are. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, that his deficiencies were glaring with those offensive line woes. And uh, that offensive line for the majority of that game was a turnstile. I mean, there were no running lanes. The few that there were, Miles Gaskin, for some reason, wasn't seeing. And I, I tweeted, that, tweeted that at a point, too, is, holy crap, did Miles Gaskin forget how to football? I mean, damn, bro, he's out there doing it like he's never done it before. My mind was blown. And eventually they started getting it together, and then 
Brissette got knocked out and he had a knee injury. And even though shortly after he was had his helmet back on, he's ready to take the field again. They're like, nope, fuck it. Coach Flo's like, Tua, get your ass in there. We're doing this thing. And Tua comes in there and opens it up with a nine yard pass. Bam, real quick. Okay, I guess he's all right. Even though right now he's still considered day to day. I don't understand. Okay, he came in, played better than the backup. What the fuck do we still need to look at? All right, whatever. You know what? They're coaches and they're professionals. So I'm assuming they know what they're doing, right? Right? Okay. But Tua came in and he played lights out, man. You know, he uh, he did his thing. Now, a lot of people might look at that and say he didn't do a whole lot. I mean, he went 8 of 13 for 158 yards, but he averaged 19.8 yards per attempt. That's pretty damn good. He was sacked one time, uh, finished with a passer rating of 104. I'd say that's pretty damn good. Now, he didn't score any touchdowns, but that's fine. Or at least, rather, he didn't throw any touchdowns. He scored one on the ground, so, you know, good on him, man. And uh, when he came in... That offense seemed to be reinvigorated. Suddenly, Jalen Waddle appeared. Suddenly, Albert Wilson appeared, uh, which that was interesting. Fun to see him him uh, make an appearance in, on the season. I remember, you know, for us that forgot he was on the roster. Uh, it was also nice to see Isaiah Ford out there still doing his thing. You know, everybody likes to write him off, and I think that's why he's able to continue producing is because nobody expects anything from him. They're like, uh, I, uh, who? Isaiah Ford? What the hell's that? Which, by the way, is still probably the steal of his draft. We, we got him in the seventh round, and I was amped. Nobody else knew who the hell he was. And I'm like, dude, I've seen this kid's tape. He can play. He can make some damn catches, man. And he continues to. He continues to somehow get open and make catches. He reminds me of somebody I know. Who might that be? Hmm. It doesn't matter. But that was really exciting to see, you know, and that once the offense started going, now we really had something, man. And then, of course, our defense continued making stops. We got that uh, forced fumble and the X Howard scoops it and scores with it. That was, oh, man, I was bouncing around. I was so excited. But, of course, the play of the night wasn't even a, a legal play. It ended up being a penalty, but uh, they were trying to set up a screen and it was weird. Robert Hunt, he, he got his head around before Miles Gaskin got his head around. And, and the play was intended for Gaskin. And ball goes a little high. Robert Hunt catches that shit, brings it down, spins around, and then just takes off for the end zone. Diving for it. Got hit. I heard somebody on the post-game show, that's the fifth quarter with the uh, the boys from the Fish Tank and, and Travis Wingfield, the, the fifth quarter post-game show. You could catch it on WQAM, The Joe, and uh, you got to search it on, like, o Odyssey, I think is what they changed the name of that app to. I don't quite remember. Uh... So don't quote me on it, but go search for it if you find it. I'm sure if they, they'll, they'll probably tweet it. They probably got some tweets on it. I know they tweet before they go live and stuff. And I stayed on through most of that show, Seth, if you're watching. I I, I checked it out. I, it never occurred to me that I could send you a text message while you were on the air. But, you know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but, yeah, man, Robert Hunt, he went, he dove for it. And they, the reason I brought that show up, though, was one of the guys compared that to the um, the famous helicopter catch as performed by Nat Moore, you know, very famous, kind of looked like a Robert Hunt diving for the end zone was hit and flipped and he just got the ball over. It was so incredibly impressive and completely worthless because it ended up being a penalty because he illegally touched the ball. But, you know, I, I, whatever. They should have gave him that one for the effort because that was a hell of a play. Certainly had all of us Dolphin fans up out of our seats and it did have us wondering. I mean, did they change the rules? Did did he declare as eligible? Because I kind of missed that part. But, I mean, if that's how that play was supposed to go, awesome. You know, <laughs> uh, Coach Flo appreciated the effort. And if I heard correctly, I think it was actually my boy, my homie, Mr. Jason Sarney, Mr. Orange Aquaman himself, that asked that question. So that was exciting, too. And uh, I'm, I'm happy, man. Shout out to Sarney. And uh, shout out to everybody that I just mentioned. 
uh, Seth Levitt, OJ McDuffie, Travis Wingfield, all of them great guys. You can catch them on the Lunch Bunch sometime during the weekend. I don't know, man. Some It was on Fridays in the afternoon. Then it was a Saturday in the afternoon. Then I think it was both. I, I don't know anymore. You know, you got to look up for them. I, I told him I would stop pumping the show, though, on here because they made me look like a fool last time. Either way. A remarkable win, exactly what we wanted to see out of that, and exactly what nobody expected. The analysts gave, gave the Ravens a kiss of death. They had no idea. Like, oh well, sucks to be y'all right now. And I feel for Lamar in one sense that he came home to show out in front of what's technically his home crowd as he's from Boynton Beach, and he got shut the fuck down. So... You know, I, I, I hope everybody learned a good lesson from that, and I hope everybody had as much fun watching the game as I did because it, I, it was an absolute riot. I was on the edge of my seat, bouncing around, screaming, hollering. Oh, my, my wife must have thought I was losing my mind, except not really, though. She completely understands nowadays. Uh, I have converted her because she went, when we first started dating, she was not at all interested in football. She didn't give a fuck. She didn't have a team. She didn't know who anybody was. Now... She is playing in my fantasy football league from my hometown, and uh, I believe she has a better record than me. But it's been great, and so now, as a result, I'm always able to watch the football games, and it's, she likes to watch them with me, and uh, she, doesn't, she doesn't find it odd that when I get uh, wild about it when the team is winning or when I get bummed if the team loses. She completely understands now, so that's been great. Looking ahead, though, we go on to face the Jets and of course we are traveling up there to New York to go face off with them I'd like to go ahead and call that one a win too but of course as we know any given Sunday or Thursday when the fuck is our bye week anyways man because I feel like we've we've uh, our schedule has been a little rough man we uh we had the short week we take the on the short week we face the Ravens are you kidding me oh man but yeah, I think we can go up into, into New York and probably kick the out of them. Uh, especially if Zach Wilson is not returned. Actually, hopefully, I would love it if Zach Wilson did return because he has just been a turnover machine. That's another thing I was right about, by the way. I, I said before he got drafted, or rather right after he got drafted, that I think he has the tools to potentially be a good starter, good to even a uh, great starter, but he's going to turn the ball over, at least early on. And sure enough, I mean, damn, he threw four against New England, and that he's just been a turnover machine. And it does not look good for him or the Jets organization for drafting him that both their second and third string quarterbacks can come in and operate this offense efficiently and effectively. So Zach Wilson's got to got to tone it down. Play within the system, my dude. Better yet, don't. Continue to freewheel it, man. That that just helps us out down there in South Beach. So, well, it remains to be seen who's going to end up being the uh, the starter. Uh, Zach Wilson looks like he possibly could play. He's doubtful, but he could play. But uh, well, that remains to be seen. If not, I think they got what's that dude's name? Mike White. And uh, that man, he's, he's better than a lot of people gave him credit for. I think. Uh, and. He, he might continue to show out. Again, this is one of those offenses. This is, of course, based on that same offense that uh, Kyle Shanahan runs over there in, in San Francisco. And remember what he was able to do with his second and third string quarterbacks, that being C.J. Beathard and uh, Nick Mullins. So again, this, the, the, the offense, the scheme is good, and it's built for the quarterback and built for the quarterback to succeed. And I think a decent quarterback can produce in that offense. Therefore, if Zach Wilson continues to struggle, how much of it is just because he's a rookie and how much is it is how much of it is his inability to just operate within a system? The early early looks at it right now suggest that of course we know two is going to be questionable. He's still technically day to day with that fractured finger. I don't understand why, but that's how it is. We've got one of our uh, defensive backs Campbell out with a toe injury. Now, they've got all kinds of issues on New York side. Uh, Vera Tucker is questionable with a toe injury. Corey Davis is questionable with a hip. Shaq Lawson questionable with a hamstring. Tevin Coleman questionable with a hamstring. There, another offensive tackle of theirs is, is doubtful with a knee injury, just like Zach Wilson. So, yeah, again, I expect that we'll probably go up in there and, and mop the floor with them. But, again, any given Sunday, 
but I believe in our our boys, and especially now we're riding riding real high on this momentum. We just beat the fucking Ravens, okay? This is good. This is really good energy. Let's go ahead and keep coasting, man, because you never know. What if we win out? Hope remains. So until then, hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to check me out and listen to me yell at you for, what is it, close to a half fucking hour? Jesus Christ. I don't know how the hell y'all do it. There's only about 20 of y'all that, that, you know, stay dedicated enough to actually watch me every week when I put one of these out, and I greatly appreciate it. Love each and every one of you. Of course, double check uh, in the description for links to some cool shit because there might be some stuff on there. And if you go through those Amazon links and make a purchase, you may be helping this channel out and helping me out. And I appreciate that. It's what helps me to do this for you because I love you so damn much. Um, of course, remember to like, subscribe, share with a friend, share with a fellow Dolphins fan, uh, share with a football fan. I intend to do some more stuff on here, but of course, since we're during the season and I am a rabid Dolphins fan, I gotta talk about my Dolphins. But uh, I do intend to do some other videos, and I have in the past about other stuff and other topics. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, man. You know, there's just so much to do and so little time, everybody. So, uh, yeah, remember, like, subscribe, share with a friend, make a cool purchase in the description down there through the links. And um, I'll see you next time.